This is Replican Fish. Welcome back. Glad you could join me again. So I have an article here. Now this article is epic. Good God, this article is epic. So many things many men have been discussing are in this article. This is a man learning the hard way. This is a man becoming red-pilled. Hello men and women, hope you're doing well. This article relates to both of us as men and women because there are women points of view in this article as well as men. The basis is how difficult dating has become from both points of view, mostly from a man. But the points in this, good God, they are, they are stunning. So get comfortable, so get comfortable. This will be a long video. I'm going to read the entire thing because it's interesting. So get yourself a drink, something to eat, a drink, a snack, whatever. Have a beer, have a smoke. You know, someone once asked in a comment if it's okay to get high to smoke a joint before watching your videos, Fish. Is it okay? My point is, why are you asking me? I have no control over that. Do whatever you want to do. In fact, I'd be surprised if at least 35% of you weren't high while watching my videos. But let's begin. Enough fish waffling. Let's begin. From dailymail.co.uk why are there no decent women out there? After a divorcee told the male of her dating disasters, one handsome, solvent, 36-year-old <laughs> says, it's far worse for men. One woman turned up covered in vomit and another asked him to, and another asked him to pay her child's school fees. Good God. Yes. Yes, it's going to be one of those ones. Written by Paul Ratner. Zara was a beautiful divorcee tanned and toned from regular gym sessions. She had glossy black hair and a knockout smile. <laughs> the simping has begun. We had met on the dating app Tinder and I decided to take her to Home House, a private members club in London's Marleybone. That sounds frisky. For our first date, where she, where she devoted the entire evening to, to a virtual aperitive slating of her ex-husband. She didn't ask me a single question about myself. Not one. Are you surprised? Are, are you even surprised? I don't think she even noticed when I picked up the £200 tab at the end of the evening. Now obviously, now obviously this man is moneyed, so £200 on one date is nothing to him. You know? Five days of this is £1,000. In a month, it could be four grand some men spend on dating. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Think of what you could do with that four grand. I'm just saying. I was raised to be chivalrous and, and like most men I know, don't mind paying if my date appreciates the gesture. Did it seem as if she appreciated the gesture? Did she? You see, as a man, some women would say I'm wrong because she was telling him about her former experiences. Some of us as men know, we don't care. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah, we get it. You're single. That's why we're taking you out. We don't want to hear about your previous crap. It's boring. It's flipping boring. Let me calm down, I've only just begun. I think she was in mid-rant about her ex-husband's filthy habit of leaving his dirty boxes on the floor as I silently handed over my credit card. Good God, what man wants to hear this? Yeah, this is attractive. Yes, women, this is attractive. No, it's not. Regardless of what you think, women, men don't want to hear about previous men in such detail. Talking about your past and yourself is not a conversation. That's something more women should understand. Talking about yourself continuously is not a conversation. And here's Paul Ratner himself, well put together man. So you'd think he wouldn't have any problems finding a nice, decent woman. You'd think he wouldn't have any problems. The way he carries himself is what many women say they want. Yeah. Interesting. Let's carry on. Glutton for punishment that I am, however, I carried on seeing 33-year-old Zara for another three months. Uh, very entitled, uh, very entitled she is. No, but you don't understand. She's really pretty. I protest when friends expressed horror at some of my anecdotes. Yeah, she's really pretty. Yeah. The, la the last words of many men. She's really pretty. Oh, I loved her so much. Many men's final words before they were effed over. Point is, women, the point I'm making is this is a man that's trying. This is a man of means whom is trying. Okay. And to be fair, she did start asking me questions. Eventually, she started asking me questions. Okay. She seemed very interested in my commercial property consult consultancy firm's turnover. Of course. It's all about the money. For the love of money. 
But it's not a song, it's not bone thugs and harmony, it's just for the love of money. My firm's turnover, the value of my flat in Hampstead. Now, let me say this, if you don't live in the UK, I don't need to know if he has a flat or a house in Hampstead. Anywhere you own in Hampstead is going to be flipping expensive. This is Hampstead, London, yeah? It's not going to be cheap. So in other words, money, money. Her ears are ringing with the sound of money. Let's carry on. The value of my flat in Hampstead, North London, and whether I'd consider paying her daughter's private school fees. Good God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Breathe. Breathe, fish, breathe. You know, the thing is, you see, we as men can react to this in a very sharp way because we see that this is ridiculous. You see, to many women, they've become too accustomed to this. So, so many women would think it normal to say this to a man. Look, look, if you're a woman listening, it's not normal for you to say to a man you've just met, even if, even for three months, that he should, that you should even ask him to pay for your child's school fees, private school fees. My God. Women don't understand. Many of you red pill us. The red pill wasn't built. Many women should understand. You make us red pilled. Many of us. Most of us red pilled. And it's things like this that make us red pilled. Indeed. We finally, we finally called it a day shortly after her birthday. Zara made it clear that she'd really like a white Range Rover. I bought her a Chanel bath set. That's still too expensive for a woman you're leaving. She texted me the next day to say she was happy for us to part ways. And I responded with, that's absolutely fine. Now, you see, some men would say, okay, they parted ways normally. Now, you see, a man like myself, I would think, you know, I've just wasted a lot of money there. A lot of money. And this woman had the gall. She had the gall to ask for a white Range Rover. A, yeah, you know? I made a joke the other day that young men that have a cougar ask for something simple like a, a PS5 or Xbox Series X. Simple, not too expensive, not like a car. You see, that's me being modest. This woman here was asking for a flipping Range Rover. Yeah? Some of you men listening, if you're going to date a cougar with money, yeah, get a flipping car. Forget the Xbox or the flipping PlayStation. Get a damned car. Flipping out. Get a car. My God, for the amount of pumping you're going to have to do, get something to drive. <laughs> you're going to need it to escape. But seriously, so ended one of the many online dating dis disasters I have notched up over the past seven years. Good God. Good luck, bro. Last month, divorcee Kim Thompson wrote, wrote despairingly in the mail of the two disastrous years she had spent online dating, bemoaning the liars, bores, and weirdos who seem to saturate the market. Are there no decent men left? She lamented, as other women queued up to share their equally horrific <laughs> tales of woe. Woe is me, oh woe is me, as a modern woman. I can't find a man. All these masks are falling on me, but my god, I can't find a decent man. Understand women, it goes both ways. Many men are saying the exact same thing. The difference is, in trying to date many of you women, you're actually red-pilling a lot of men. Yeah. Carry on. That's happening naturally. By the way, naturally. This is a good example. Well, Kim, I'd just like to point out that it's just as difficult for us men out there. Lack of quality dates is not a women-only problem. That's a nice line. Lack of quality dates is not a women-only problem, and mercenaries, cheats, and oddballs are not restricted to the male of the species. Indeed, indeed, bars, bars, as some would say, because it's not restricted to just males. Let's not act as if it's just men that are weirdos, strange, crazy, absolutely nuts, unkempt, unhygienic, look rough, smell bad. I'm carrying on too much, but you know what I mean, you know what I mean, it's, it's not just, that's not just a man thing, okay, it's not just a man thing, at least Zara was honest, she never hid the fact that her aim was to quit her job as a nail technician, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and for her and her daughter to live a lavish life, off whom, off the man, of course, off the man, off a sucker, yeah, off a captain, 
I hope Paul sees how women see him. They see him as a sucker. It's sad to say and it sounds wrong but that's the truth. Some women out there would see this man as a sucker, some, some. To be a nail technician and have the gall to think you're gonna bag this man who has worked very hard in his life to accomplish everything he's accomplished. But yet a single mother is worth the same as this man? I think not, I think not. Not to be harsh or cruel, I, I no, no. I hear she's married now, oh my god. And I wish her all the luck in the world. I wish the man all the luck in the world. Oh, someone married her. Someone... You know, why am I surprised? I shouldn't be surprised. You know, I shouldn't be surprised. You see, again, women, many of you can bank on the fact that there will be a man to catch you. For the men that don't want you, many of you can guarantee that there will be a simp to catch you. Now, does she want this man truly and deeply? Does she love him? <laughs> now that laugh was a bit too hard no she's settling for that man she's married to settling well, let's carry on but why is finding a life partner so difficult nowadays uh, many things oh there are many reasons trust me my lovely parents recently celebrated their ruby wedding anniversary having started dating aged 16 when their eyes met across a crowded Luton airport oh <laughs> how sweet long before the internet and dating had been invented. Good point. And my points again, please. If you're a grown person, if you're a boomer or a late Gen Xer of a certain age and you hooked up with your partner before the internet, please, for the love of God, stop telling young people how to hook up. It's a vastly different thing. Vastly. Yes, you met your partner 30, 40 years ago and they're great. Of course, it's not now. Some older people, some, 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 they underestimate how powerful the internet is. So when they say go out there and find someone, yeah, no, 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 no. It's not the same as it was 40 years ago, let's be honest. And it's why I say we have to bastardize ourselves. Because things have changed so much, we can't use old, out-of-date traditional things to hook up and meet nowadays, or to even be together. Because of how things have changed, we have to think different. We have no choice but to. If you don't, you're going to end up in more situations like Paul here, trying to be a good, decent man, looking for a woman and just getting effed over along the way. Let's carry on. I grew up believing that something equally wondrous would happen to me. Yeah, like I said, that was 30, 40 years ago. I didn't think it was too much to expect as a, as a five foot, 11 inch tall, solvent, dark, and I'm told, relatively handsome. I think I have a lot to offer. And Paul, yes you do sir, yes you do. Understand this Paul, you have to accept how women are. You're going out there with this, look, know how good you are as a man. Understand that and embrace it. Men need to stop giving their greatness to women, to have women step on it, act as if it's nothing, and then making men feel lesser about themselves after they've done everything the book required. No, 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 no. Men, learn to keep that for yourselves. Women, understand why men are keeping it for themselves. Simply put, you're showing us every day, as women, you're showing us that you don't even appreciate it, that it's not even good enough. Maybe the fact that there's so many men doing it, trying to be this ultra super impossible man that women are just bored of it. Yeah. So women understand, you can blame men for being this and that, but no, stop for a second and look at what you and other women may have done. What you do. The fact that even when presented with a man that's a good man, it's still not good enough. No, he's not simping enough, he's not rich enough, he's not enough of a rich simp, who knows? Who knows? But his thoughts on himself are accurate, Yes, he is a man of value. He has to believe and understand that he is the prize. But for him to understand, never let women judge whom the prize is. They would say it's them, but let's carry on. After leaving Merchant Taylor's Independent School in North, Lon in North West London, I went on to Warwick University to study economics and politics. I got my first job in the property business in my early 20s and age 25 set up my own company. This is a young man 
who has achieved so much in his life. Yet you see, this man may not see himself as the prize because of women. Do you see how this works, women? That many men lack belief in themselves because they lack you. That's not a good thing. You can gloat as a woman, but that's not a good thing. That's not healthy for men. Because when they see the truth, many of these men get angry. They would realize, I've wasted so much time. It was all about me in the end. It was never about them. Indeed, sometimes you have to get burnt to realize it. By the age of 29, I'd had four quite serious relationships, but still hadn't met anyone I'd wanted to spend the rest of my life with. So when a fellow guest at a wedding told me about the new world of app dating, my foray into Tinder, Bumble and Hinge began. Oh my God. Never did I imagine that now, at the ripe old age of 36, you're not flipping old. You're a year younger than me, you're not old. A time in my life when I'd expected to have children and be spending my weekends flying, flying kites and enjoying dinner parties with other parents, I would still be single. Now, now saying this to some men doesn't work, but this man should understand how lucky he is. He, in a sense, he's hoping to lose everything he has right now. His freedom, his finances, his life. It's difficult to explain. It's difficult to explain to some men that everything you have is not for you to collect it just to give to a woman. Women nowadays expect it too much. Therefore, give them little to nothing. They don't deserve so much. If a woman is around for you, she's around for you. If she's there for your money, she's there for your money. She will never be there for you. But as some men are seeing, even when they have so much, it's still not enough. It's still not enough. Is it because I'm especially picky? I don't think so. It's not because you're picky. It's, there's a lot of just bad women out there. When I'm looking for a wife, is someone with a sense of fun, who's intelligent and attractive, I don't think that's asking too much, do you? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not, bro. Uh, it's, it's, it's not asking too much. It's... I made a video about this a very long time ago. Sometimes as men, we expect too much from modern women. It's a sad thing. I hope you understand that women listening. Many men reach a point where they realize we, we expected too much from women. We expected... You know, it seems like normal things, but it doesn't always work out that way. It should. You'd think it would, but damn, it doesn't. Sadly, I've come to the conclusion that my bizarre and disastrous experience with Zara is far from unique. And it's not. It is not, Paul. It is flipping not. Good God. The amount of men that thought they were crazy because of their experiences. I myself, speaking from flipping experience thought they were crazy from their experiences and thought, is no one else going through this? Is not, am I the only one? Well, thanks to the internet and the red pill. Uh, no, no, no fish, no fish. In fact, your story fish is quite flipping boring in comparison to others because many men have been through far worse than you. Not like there's a comparison, but you see, the point I am making here is Paul, this man is becoming red pilled. Do you understand? If he isn't already, he's becoming red-pilled. Women listening, do you see the process of what's going on? For him, this is a gradual process. This is a man becoming red-pilled. You see, right now, he still has hope. He still has hope. Women should understand more and more men are going through this. And it's happening more at a more rapid rate. So while you're out there looking for a man, understand women, there are many other women red pilling men just like this it's not me saying it it's not the internet saying it it's happening naturally it's all natural another date i'll never forget was isabel a gorgeous olive complexion 31 year old estate agent of greek descent yeah she sounds fine whom, whom i first came across on the dating app hinge in about 2013 i arranged to meet her for drinks at the london edition boutique hotel in soho and she arrived in a top of the range Mercedes SLK. Yeah, she sounds moneyed. <laughs> wait, wait. I like cars and have an Audi TT. Nice car. It's a nice car. So I knew it was worth about £35,000. Then regaled me with tales of how successful she had been playing the London property market and the extravagant lifestyle it afforded. Yeah, I'm sure it did. 
Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> After our third date, she asked if I wanted to see where she lived and drove me along the King's Road in Chelsea, pointed to a very swanky block of flats, then inexplicably dropped me at the tube station. <laughs> <laughs> you got played bro you got played <laughs> wait 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 the next time we met i suggested after dinner that she might like to show me inside her lovely flat yeah yeah good job paul trying to get some trying to get some and see her flat as well clever thinking she turned to me listen to this one man listen to this listen to this she turned to me sternly and said oh paul do you really think i could afford to live there <laughs> That's just a story I tell people. I actually live 20 miles out in Essex. And this isn't my car. It's rented through a car sharing scheme. In fact, <laughs> I have to get it back by midnight. For, for the love of God. For the love of money. Wow. Pointing to her designer threads, she added, These aren't my clothes either. They're all borrowed. You see, I'm not surprised at any of this. Not surprised at all. Not surprised. It's flipping funny. It's hilarious. You see, as I said before, more and more men are coming across more and more women like this. Women understand again, these spaces don't exist because men have a problem or an issue. No, 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 no. Yes, obviously some men do. But this space, these spaces exist as a reaction to what's going on. As a natural reaction to what's going on, to what many of you are doing. It goes deeper than a few men complaining that they can't find a woman. You can paint it that way all you want to. Understand? Understand as men, we know it's far deeper than that. It didn't matter to me whether she was rich or poor. I doubt a woman would say that's about a man. And I told her so. But a chill ran down my spine as I realized I was trapped in a car with a compulsive liar whom I didn't know. What else could she be hiding? And what else may she do to you? accuse you of something paul yeah some things sound far-fetched but then again as a man how far-fetched are these things watch gone girl man watch gone girl as we stopped at the traffic lights i instinctively reached for the passenger door handle hoping to escape <laughs> but it was locked you see he's learning he's learning run men run for your damned lives flee flee women listening this is why I tell men to run, not to literally run, in some cases actually run like Forrest Gump escape, but this is why I tell men to run. You see, when you see a few red flags or just one glaring bright red flag, yeah, run. As men, run. The thing is, some men don't believe the flags until it's too late. They think, no, 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 no. It's a small thing. Let me just, let me stick with her and see it out. Then in the end, they realize they should have ran from they saw the first red flag. So yes, this is why I tell men to run, to flee. Thankfully, she dropped me at the station and neither of us ever made contact again. Good. I think she was a fake it till you make it kind of girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many of them are walking around? But there was no way I could build a life with someone if I could never trust a word she said. Indeed indeed within, within months i'd met lisa uh, lisa's who had long black hair that she wore in that she wore in an alluring beehive and green eyes with whom i was utterly smitten green eyes admittedly yes I, i'm a green-eyed person myself not that's not that i have green eyes but women with green eyes admittedly good god yeah one of my weaknesses one of my weaknesses admittedly yeah I, I don't know i don't know i don't know it's, uh, i don't i don't understand it either but let's just carry on bloody green eyes when she discovered i was interested in politics she revealed she had a double first in in the subject from university college in london after finding out i ran my own company she told me all about her award-winning businesses i couldn't believe how much we had in common uh, all the while all the while she regaled me with tales about partying with A-list celebrities. Bullcrap. It was as if someone had created my perfect woman. Anytime you think that run. Anytime you think that run. Well, let's carry on. It was as if someone had created my perfect woman and delivered her to me. And throughout the three months we dated, I was utterly besotted. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. Then one day, without warning, Lisa ghosted me. 
she suddenly stopped picking up when I called and didn't return my messages. Via a mutual friend, I heard she was dating someone else and gradually discovered this was her modus operandi. Dating a man for three to four months while pretending to be whatever she thought he wanted her to be. Gold! Gems! Gems. Now, let, let me stop and explain why Fish is reacting so much. This is something I have seen so much. I have seen this pattern so many times. I have to wonder how interwoven this pattern is into many women because I've seen it too many times before. I've seen it before. Now, women listening, the fact you will never be fully honest with this, many men are learning this the hard way. And what's happening, women, as I said before, it's red pilling us as men, which is good. I'm not complaining. It's good. But that sequence right there, men, the three to four months pretending to be whatever he wanted her to be that's not just this woman that is so common nowadays so so common breathe fish breathe 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 but that right there is a gem let's carry on let's carry on <laughs> then moving on to someone new of course of course the hypergamous nature and the monkey branching men should understand women always keep one in the chamber just in case, as in another man, you know. And women, you know you do this, just in case, isn't that right? Without asking my permission, still, I was heartbroken and refused to believe it until a friend said, do you really think she got a double first from UCL? Again, men, as you know, look at what they say in comparison to what they do, in comparison to what they do and who they actually are. Without asking my permission, he had done some research. It turned out UCL don't actually award double firsts. And even if it had, this was before the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, was introduced. It had no record of Lisa ever going there. Then came Georgia, 29, slim, with green eyes again. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And curly brown hair. Oh, God. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Let's carry on. Who taught pianos in school? who came into my life via Tinder. On our third date, she invited me to her parents' house in Hertfordshire for dinner, along with her sister and brother-in-law. I was delighted. It's a bit too soon for that, bro. Georgia had a real warmth, and I love the fact that she liked me. That she, like me, was clearly family orientated. Okay. But we had barely finished our starters when her mom began grilling me about how much, how much I earned from my business and where I lived. Well, of course, the mother would be interested. Many mothers teach their daughters this. Find a man who loves you more than you love them and make sure he has more money than you and make sure he will give you access to his money. Yeah. Many daughters are taught this. I'm guessing she was trying to establish if I was suitable marriage material, but it felt more like being credit checked because that's what it is. The evening went from awkward to downright bizarre when George's mother a slim, wiry woman without obvious muscles, challenged her son-in-law to an arm wrestle. I sat wide-eyed as the mom, clearly as strong as an ox, beat him hands down. It turned out this was something of a party piece. I don't know if I should have been flattered or offended, or if the whole display was a veiled warning of what could happen if I mistreated her daughter. But luckily, she didn't challenge me to a turn. Georgia turned 30 soon afterwards, and for our fourth date, I took her to the Ivy Cafe in Marleybone to celebrate, and bought her flowers and a Smith's and a Smithson leather-bound notebook. Okay. Sometime between the main course and dessert, she announced that her master plan was to be married and have a baby within a year. So a while ago, I made a video stating a woman said to me, when she was about 28, that she wants to have a baby and be settled down by 35. She said the man didn't matter so long as there was a man. A decent enough man. Yeah, I ran from her. But yeah, but yeah, let's carry on. And if that didn't happen, she would book herself into a sperm bank and try for a baby alone. This is my point again. Women, I don't know Paul. Many men listening don't know Paul. Yet many of us understand exactly what Paul is going through. Many of us have shared, if not the exact same experience, similar experiences to Paul. We're seeing this more and more. It's not just men like Replicant Fish and other men that say these things. No, no, women. Regular men, the ones you hope never become red-pilled, are seeing it naturally. So you have to pay attention, women, as to what's going on. 
I almost choked on my wine. I mean, I too want to settle down, but I want to know I'm with the right person. Thank you very much, Paul. I said the exact same thing. We don't know each other, never met each other in our lives, but yet, as men, we have similar thoughts, don't we? Yet he's not red-pilled and I am. Yet we have similar thoughts on these things. Interesting. Let's carry on. You see, it's all a process. It's all a process, women. This is how it's happening. And it's happening more than you can believe. However, I do understand that... However, I do understand that ticking... That ticking a biological clock puts women in their 30s under far more pressure than men. As I've said before myself, and I thought the kindest thing I could do, given that I wasn't yet completely sure about her, was to end the relationship so she could look for someone who was, and I would agree 100%, because I've been there myself. There are many, there are many men out there, just give them room to get what they want from the men they want it from. It doesn't have to be you. Men, learn when to run. Learn when to run. As it turned out, she found that someone pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. Love, what's love? You know, soulmate, yeah? Okay. For the love, for the love of money. She found someone pretty fast, and I understand. And I understand they were married within six months. Oh my god. Poor guy, poor guy, he's doomed. He's doomed. Then there was Amanda, 28, a Welsh Valley's vixen. She was incredibly vivacious with big blonde hair, steely blue eyes, and a come-hither smile. As we merrily worked our way through two bottles of red, I felt, I felt I had finally met someone I could really connect with. Uh, that was until the subject of politics came up, and she proudly announced that she voted for the British National Party. <laughs> oh man. And that's a, that's a, um, that's a political party in the UK that yeah has, that have very strong views on on race and certain things. This got heated when I told her I didn't see the BNP as a political party, but as a nasty racist rabble who had no place in the British public life. I also mentioned that I had run for Parliament for the Conservatives in 2015 in the same constituency as former BNP leader Nick Griffin stood for stood for in 2000. While I lost to Labour, I'm relieved to say. So did he. That was my first and last date with Amanda. As a Jewish man, I'm guessing I wouldn't have been her perfect spouse either. And another memorable one-off was with Kathy, 29, a stunningly beautiful Londoner. When the conversation turned to what we both did for a living, she announced proudly, I take leases on flats and then sublet them to other tenants without the landlords knowing. Okay, she's, she's, a, she's a con woman in other words. Taken aback, I asked, isn't that illegal? And she replied, it's not not illegal. Oh, God, she's one of them. Run. <laughs> I th I'd thought women couldn't get any stranger, but then last year came Jasmine. 34. I don't like these names are too, I don't like these names are too familiar. A petite brunette with a nose stud and tattoos who worked in, who worked in the music industry. Uh, yeah. Uh, she looked like trouble, but in a way, I found her exciting and fun. <laughs> Yeah, many men have thought the same thing. Our third date was at her local pub. She texted me en route to say, I'm here early. What would you like to drink? Oh, that's nice. No, she sounds like a charming woman. Thrilled, thrilled, I replied, whiskey on the rocks. But when I turned up, she was nowhere to be seen and wasn't answering her phone. I waited at the bar, confused and a bit worried about her for 20 minutes until she emerged from the toilets wearing hot pants, white trainers and a long white t-shirt horribly stained with vomit, which she said had come from a friend's son. She never explained what she was doing in the loose all that time, and I had no idea why, as she only lived around the corner, she hadn't gone home to change. Something felt odd about it all. Now I can say what I think happened, uh, but I don't think I can say it on YouTube. Eh. If, she was, if she was in there alone, it's one thing. If she was in there doing drugs, it's another thing, but yeah, let's carry on. My friends agreed when I told them the tale afterwards. Perhaps it was inevitable that it just fizzled out. Real life dates have obviously been off, off of the agenda since March. But I've had a few over WhatsApp, none of which I felt was right for me. However, being alone during lockdown has made me even more determined to find my miss right. No bro, no. It would have been so much nicer to have had someone to share this time with. I understand the thoughts. I understand the thoughts, bro. But no, no. 
I'm still a romantic and believe there are women out there with whom I'd be a good match. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course you would. Of course you would. But what are their intentions? These women have already shown him... These women have already shown him what he may come across in future. The difference is he may meet a woman that he thinks is different from all of these women he's been speaking about. He would think he's going to meet a woman vastly different from what he's talking about. The sad thing is, no you won't, Paul. Sorry, no you won't. No you won't. Now women listening, it's not me saying that there aren't any good women out there. That's not my point. It's the point that what some men are looking for in terms of a woman and what they'd want from a decent woman to become maybe a wife one day, many men are seeing that doesn't exist anymore. Women are just very different now. Now, as a red-pilled man, I'm saying this. This is a man that's not red-pilled, but he's going to be. I guarantee you, he's going to be. So why have I had so many bizarre experiences with online dating? I don't believe the people it attracts are any odder than those you find in the general population. They're not. They're not. They're the same people. But when your first encounters with romantic interests are in real life, you pick up on nuances that are absent when you're relying on computer algorithms to decide if someone is a match. Indeed, I'm not letting that put me off. Yep, more blue steak, keep eating that blue pill steak. I'm not letting that put me off though. And I have a date with a woman I met on Bumble, planned for this evening. We are having... We are having socially distanced drinks in Regent's Park, Northwest London. No one can accuse me of being a quitter. And who knows, this one might just be the one. The women's names have been changed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Epic. You see, now, women listening... Now, women listening, you would think this man endearing because he, even with what he's come across, he has not given up hope of finding one of you to settle down with. See, this is a good man. Women treat him well. Treat him well. See, men like me? <laughs> I'm not a quitter. No, I'm not a quitter. It's not about quitting. It's about knowing what you're going for in the first place. See, the difference between me and Paul is I know what I'm going into. I know beforehand that this could be one of many, many things. <laughs> many things. And it's not about quitting. It's about avoiding nonsense and crap. Avoiding wasting your time. Avoiding being used. Avoiding being a doormat. It's about not letting women use us the way so many women seem to want to use us nowadays. Because once again, women, this is why many of us as men are becoming red-pilled. It's not because of this or that. No, no, women. It's because of you. It's simply because of you. And some could say how the government and society has made you. But I say still, it's because of you women. Now you can be that or be better. That depends on you. But as men and as you men listening know, yeah, I can't be bothered. No, thank you. Other men can do that. I will not be a cleanup man to be there to save any woman. Not in a bad sense. No, it's just a fact of... When you can see so much, you understand why you will not be a captain, why it's best to do for yourself. Enjoy women, yes, have your fun, hang out with them if you want to, bust and move if you will, bust and move safely. But other than that, there will be nothing serious and long term. But that's how some men think, some, but I wonder how long it will be at the small number of some. In other words, focus, observe. Remember, the world is yours. Have a nice day.